Hi, Dr. H here. This video is going to go over water and its importance to life, and we'll also touch a little bit on the pH scale. If you remember from the chemistry video, we talked about, uh, mentioned that water is a polar molecule, which means that it's, it has a covalent molecule, so there is a covalent chemical bond between the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms. But this is not just a regular uh, sharing of the electron. Because oxygen is so highly electronegative, in fact, it is the most electronegative atom that we usually come across in biology, it really wants to grab those electrons. So it pulls those electrons away from hydrogen very, very strongly. And hydrogen, being very weakly electronegative, is not really able to do much about it. It can't pull back on those electrons to get them back towards itself. So that means that the electrons, uh, you can think of it, the electrons tend to spend more time around the oxygen atom than they do around the two hydrogen atoms. And that sets up a situation where the oxygen atom in the water molecule has a partially negative charge. It is slightly negative. Uh, and this little symbol here is uh, supposed to represent that partial negative. It's, uh, it's a lowercase delta. And the hydrogen atoms here on the two ends are partially positive. Okay, and that is the definition of a polar covalent bond. Uh, because of the polar nature of the molecule, uh, and because there are, there's positive and negative ends, the positive and negative ends tend to attract each other. Okay, and that attraction, uh, shown here with, and with the dotted line, is what's known as a hydrogen bond. And these hydrogen bonds form between adjacent water molecules. You can see uh, four hydrogen bonds forming here between these, these uh, five water molecules. And these hydrogen bonds are very, very important for water. Pretty much all of these uh, important emergent properties of water are all due to these hydrogen bonds. So what are these four very important emergent properties of water. Okay, uh, the cohesion and adhesion, temperature moderation, expansion upon freezing, and versatility as a solvent. These four properties are what make water so important for life on Earth. So important, in fact, that when we go out to other planets, uh, such as Mars, and look for signs of life, one of the things that we look for is we look for the presence of water. Has, is water there now? Has it ever been there in the past? So let's talk about these, uh, these four properties. Okay, cohesion and adhesion. Uh, these two are very closely related. Uh, cohesion is defined as two water molecules kind of sticking to each other. Uh, when they form hydrogen bonds with each other, the, the image that we saw a few slides ago, that was water being cohesive. Um, and adhesion is water sticking to something else, okay? Uh, when you get out of the shower in the morning and the mirror is all fogged up, uh, that is water adhering to the glass surface of the mirror. This is all because of the hydrogen bond. Okay, the water molecules stick to each other and they stick to a surface that's also able to form hydrogen bonds. So why is this so important for life? And if we think about trees, right? Trees are really, really tall. These are some very, very tall trees. I believe these are the, uh, the giant sequoias out in California. Um, where do the leaves up top here? They get their water from the roots down here in the ground. So that water has to travel all the way up the trunks, hundreds and hundreds of meters up. It does that through the uh, combined efforts of cohesion and adhesion. So if you were able to kind of shrink yourself down and look at the uh, molecular level, what's going on with the water moving through here, you would see that there is a tiny chain of water molecules one by one up the tree. And as one water molecule moves up, it pulls the next one up, that pulls the one below it, and there's this constant pulling of the water moving up the tree trunk. And the water will also adhere to the sides of these very thin uh, vessels. 
that run up the tree trunk, the uh, xylem, which is the water vascular system in, the, in plants. So cohesion and adhesion work to move water very, very large distances against the, the pull of gravity up a tree. And that's very important, obviously, for the trees to survive. Okay, moderation of temperature. It takes energy to create and to break all of these hydrogen bonds. And what that means is that when the sun beats down on water, puts in all that energy, the water molecules are not free to really heat up. They're not free to start vibrating that, that rapidly right away. They have, you know, they're held together by all of these hydrogen bonds. So that kind of cools the water down. It, you have to start breaking those hydrogen bonds in order for the water temperature to really start going up. The water then is also, once it does heat up, it's able to hold on to that heat for a very long time. As those hydrogen bonds start to reform, the water will cool down very slowly. What that means in terms of living things is that the temperature, the climate of areas around large bodies of, of water tends to be moderate. Okay? There's not a real wide temperature swing. In fact, if we uh, look at the map here, we take, we take two areas which seem to have very different climates. Uh, Buffalo, New York, up here, you probably think snow, ice, cold. Uh, and Rome, Italy, you think nice, warm, Mediterranean climate. Those two areas are at the exact same latitude. You see the straight line drawn across the map here. Rome, the climate in Rome is so much different because it is surrounded by all of this water, by the Mediterranean Sea. And it holds on to that heat and then slowly releases that heat back up into the air. And there's also large uh, currents that move through the uh, oceans, bringing, so there's a large current that moves through the Atlantic Ocean like this that brings warm water up from the equator across and over to parts of Europe, which really keeps Europe much more moderate than areas of North America, which are at the same latitude. Okay, so very, very important for establishing the moderate climates around large bodies of water. Okay, we all have probably experienced the fact that ice floats. Um, you know, you put ice cubes in your glass, they rise to the top, doesn't seem like too big of a deal. But if we think about what happens during the winter time when lakes and ponds and rivers freeze, okay, they freeze at the top and you get a pretty good solid layer of ice at the top. And then underneath that, because ice rises to the top, the water remains liquid. That allows the life in that pond to just kind of move to the bottom and stay in the water and stay alive all winter. And that water is held at a fairly constant temperature because it is insulated from the cold air above by that nice thick layer of ice. Okay, if ice uh, and water behaved like most other substances on Earth, and that is when they freeze, uh, they become more dense and fall to the bottom. That would mean that these lakes and ponds would freeze from the bottom up. They would freeze completely solid, and life would have nowhere to go during the uh, winter time. So uh, this is also, as I said, these are all due to hydrogen bonds. Uh, this one, uh, the ice, when water freezes, the... Uh, hydrogen bond lattice sort of expands a little bit. The hydrogen bonds become just a little bit uh, further apart. So when two objects are further apart, uh, that makes things a little less dense. So the ice tends to be a little less dense and it rises up to the top. And the last sort of emergent property of water is the fact that water is a very, very good solvent. Most solids uh, that, sh that go into water will very, very easily dissolve. Whether it is something simple like salt or sugar here, um, or something very complex like a protein, the fact that water has these positive and negative ends allow most things to dissolve in, a, in an aqueous solution. So let's take a look at dissolving an ionic compound in water, say sodium chloride. So 
when sodium chloride was, uh, gets dissolved, uh, the two ions disassociate. So here we have the positive sodium ion here and the negative chloride ion down here. Uh, and the reason that water does such a good job at dissolving this is because they each, uh, since water has positive and negative ends, each ion can now be surrounded uh, by its opposite charge. So the positive sodium ion here, it's surrounded by water with the negative oxygen pointing in towards it. And the negative chloride ion here is surrounded by water with the two positive hydrogens pointing into it. So any ionic solid, any ionic substance is going to dissolve very, very easily within water because it can make both sides happy. Okay, the sodium is happy because it's surrounded by negatives, and the chloride is happy because it is surrounded by positives. Now, what about something very, very large? Uh, say a protein, okay, our blood has lots and lots of dissolved proteins in it. How does water help to dissolve that? Well, proteins uh, have these surface charges all over them. Okay, this uh, map here, shows, let's see, it looks like the red areas uh, are sort of areas of negative charge and the blue areas seem to be pot areas of slightly more positive charge. So the water can arrange itself around these little micro pockets of different charge and really get that, those proteins to fully dissolve. They can surround them with water, which is really what dissolving something means. Okay, and life exists, our bodies, our cells, are aqueous solution. Okay, water is the solvent inside of our bodies. Okay, so these, uh, these four properties, okay, cohesion, adhesion, moderation of temperature, uh, insulation, frozen water because the ice will float, and its solvent ability. All four of those are very important for life, and they are all due to the hydrogen bond ability and the polar nature of the water. Dropping science like Galileo dropped the orange.